Glory to God. You see, in this house and all over the world, we live in a loveless generation. Love is absent. All we know is what we can get and what we can get the other person to do for us or you do for me, I do for you. I need you and you need me. There's no such thing as love anymore. And what we get out of relationship, then it's not good. But when God loves you, it's goodness. Let me tell you, every good and perfect gift comes from above and it comes from the father of lights so when God says I'm giving you my love that means he's giving you his goodness that means the trash that you're hanging on to let it go because goodness coming <laughs> Lord I just feel a hollering right here I said the junk that you're holding on to let it go because goodness is coming the mess that you're into hop out of it because goodness is coming now two of them can't be in the same house two of them can't be in your life at the same time one of them got to go and if God is getting ready to give you goodness I suggest that right now you get rid of anything that can keep you from receiving the goodness of God so come on before I pronounce it shake it off before I give it to you get it out your spirit because God's getting ready to do something that's going to blow your mind He's getting ready to give you what no man can give you. Are you ready for the love of God? May the love of God pursue you and overtake you. Come on and praise it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, this love of God, it is the communication of his grace. Listen to what his love is. He's going to communicate his grace. He's going to express his favor, express his favor, express his favor. That means that things that are blocked, things that's keeping you back, he's going to find ingenious, creative ways of getting you out of it. Lord have mercy. People that said no on yesterday will suddenly call you up and say yes on today. Oh, come on. Things that were seemingly so far away from you will start running after you. Nobody can do that but God. Not only his grace, but his comfort, his consolation. He's going to impart this to you. Not only that, but salvation and healing and pardon of sin. He's also going to give you joy and peace. You know, we also talk about the kingdom of God. And we're constantly talking about the kingdom of God. And I'm a kingdom kid. And I'm a child of the kingdom. But the kingdom of God has nothing to do with what we think it is. It's joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, come on. See, nobody shouting over that. See? But ladies and gentlemen, most church people don't have any more joy. You see how much music we got to give you just to get you to raise your hand? Huh? We got to beg you to clap, beg you to stand, beg you to say hallelujah, beg you, beg you, beg you. You're looking for a new thrill, looking for a new preacher, looking for somebody who can make you holler and scream. You didn't bring no joy in here. But the kingdom of God is joy. That means you wake up in the morning. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened in the old church. In the old church where Pastor and Donnie and some of the others were raised, their own mothers didn't have half of what we had. We have cars and more cars and we have clothes. These mothers took public transportation. These mothers raised children without a husband. These mothers went and scrubbed people's floors and washed their clothes and suffered great indignities. But when they got to church, before they hit the door, they, eh, oh, eh. I know you all think that's churchy. That ain't churchy, honey. That's something that's missing in this modern day. Sitting down, writing in your Bible, looking intelligent generation. Oh, but you ain't got no joy. In the midnight hour, you ought to be able to say that. Ah. 